Welcome to Tickmill Weekly Market Outlook for week commencing January the 13th. We could be in for a risk off start to Asian trade this evening and as we head into the London session on Monday as there are reports uh, this afternoon that uh, four rockets have slammed into an Iraqi airbase in North Baghdad where US troops are based. Hopefully there won't be any casualties, but uh, we should be cautious that we could see a risk off start to trading this week. The highlight of the week in theory should be the signing of the phase one trade deal in Washington on Wednesday. In terms of US data, we'll get updates on inflation Tuesday, retail sales Thursday and industrial production on Friday. Soft December manufacturing ISM reading is still sending warning signals over the industrial sector. There are no signs yet that weakness here is spreading into other sectors. And notably, even events in the Middle East so far have not budged the market from its thinking that the Fed policy rate will remain untouched throughout the first half of 2020. From a technical perspective, the dollar index staged a recovery as anticipated this week, but we are starting to see signs of this recovery running into some resistance, certainly as we head up into the descending trendline resistance at 97.90, with the monthly R1 pivot just above at 97.80. I'd be looking for fresh selling to emerge in the market here, as we then would look for a trade back down through the yearly pivot at 97.10, opening up a retest of support down to 96.50. While we're talking about the dollar, let's check in with gold. Gold, as we anticipated, had duly broken out of its consolidation phase and has seen us trade up above our 1585 target to test offers and stops above the 1600 level. We saw a sharp reversal um, in the middle of last week as the Tensions regarding the Middle East situation began to wane somewhat. However, gold has found support at the prior highs at the 1550, 1540 area. As this level supports, we can anticipate that there's the potential to retest these offers and stops above 1600. If we can take those out, look for a test of 1630 as the next upside objective. However, if we fail to capitalise on Friday's reversal and we break back down through the 1540 area, I'd be looking for a move back down to test the monthly pivot at the 1500 level. In Canada, the job situation recovered in December after the dreadful November reading, with the unemployment rate falling to 5.6% and full-time hiring displaying a solid rebound. Ultimately, this should ease worries about the imminent downturn in the Canadian labour market and keep the pressure off the Canadian dollar for now. In terms of data releases this week, the Bank of Canada Business Outlook Survey will be watched amid an otherwise sparse calendar. From a technical perspective, the Canadian dollar recovered to test the monthly pivot at the 130.90 area. If we fail to get a close back above this 11390 area look for fresh sellers to step in and we would anticipate a retest down back at the 12960 support and then the potential to extend down to test the pivotal 12840 12850 descending trendline support and the monthly S1 if we can get a close back above the 131 level look for a test of 132 where the yearly pivot comes in European data calendar is relatively quiet this week. We'll see November industrial production data on Wednesday and the minutes of the December European Central Bank meeting. The focus here will probably be on what is to be expected of the strategic review on monetary policy. For example, a change in the inflation target. The euro has started the year in a quiet fashion despite events in the Middle East and at the margin is showing a negative correlation with risk as the euro builds out its status as a funding currency. From a technical perspective, the euro has tested down to a symmetry swing support target identified in the daily market outlet this week at the 111. Buyers have stepped in here and we did see a reversal on Friday. However, the reversal wasn't sufficient to flip the daily chart bullish as per the near-term volume weighted average price. I've been looking for a close back above 111.30 to encourage the potential to see a retest of the prior highs up towards 112.30. 
If we can't reclaim the monthly pivot at 111.50, look for a test down, test towards 110.60 and 110.40, where we have a bigger symmetry swing objective with the decline uh, that we saw from the 21st of October through to the 2nd of December, likely being replicated to see us test this 110.40 support area. Well, we're talking about the euro, let's check in with the DAX. The DAX duly recovered as we saw across um, most of the major equity markets this week. And we're now looking for a test of this uh, long held target at the 13,658 area. As we get up to this area, I'd be looking for some profit taking to emerge and certainly see a correction from the 13,650 back down to test the breakout level here at probably around 13,400. If we don't find fresh buyers at 13,400, this profit taking move could extend back to test the monthly pivot at 13,160 and even the ascending trend line support down to 13,000 itself. Comments from the Bank of England Governor Mark Carney suggest that the central bank may have ended their Brexit moratorium and be edging towards a rate cut. If so, this will probably take place in the May meeting. The UK jobs data will probably have the biggest say as to whether the BOE does cut rates. However, this week we don't get any jobs data, but instead we receive updates on inflation Tuesday and retail sales Friday. The former should not be a big market mover, but indications of poor Christmas sales point to downside risk to the December retail sales figure. The sterling pound is rotating between two key levels. If we can hold the 130.20 as support, there's the potential to retest back into the 133.80 area, which would be an A, B, C, D, uh, equidistant swing target. However, as we continue to trade below the 132.85, and certainly if we can take out last week's lows in the 130, I'd be looking for a move back down to test support towards 129. If we fail here, then I'd be anticipating a test of the ascending trend line support and the ABCD downside target at 127.60 to 127.80. Japanese data in the coming weeks sees the November balance of payment data and core machinery orders. Neither of these is likely to excite the yen too much. Instead, the local focus will be on whether the Nikkei 225 can push to a new cycle high above the 25,000 level, representing its highest levels since the early 1990s. Obviously, we want to pay attention at the Asian Open with respect to uh, the news coming out of the Middle East. This may impact the ability of the Nikkei to push higher early in the week. From a technical perspective, the dollar yen is back up testing this key resistance level, a third test here at the 109.60 to 109.70 area. As this level caps, I'd be looking for a move back down to test 108.50. Once again, this well-trodden range, but test that 108.50 as support. If we can hold there again, then I still see the potential that we, on a fourth test of this resistance area, will break higher and ultimately test the 110.50 equidistant swing target. However, a failure to find support at this 108.50 will likely have us back down, looking towards bids at the 108 level. In Australia, obviously, unfortunately, and, and sadly so, uh, focus is likely to continue to be on the bushfire crisis. Um, reports suggest that multiple fires have merged over the weekends at the border of New South Wales and Victoria. With such envi environmental crisis in place and uncertainty around the impact on the Australian economy, with a lack of tier one data this week, the Australian dollar will likely take its lead from risk sentiment and the US-China trade deal on Wednesday. We did see a sharp reversal on Friday from the symmetry swing support area identified in my chart of the day. Um, if we can see some follow through early in the week above this 69 level, Look for a close back above the 69.35 monthly pivot to encourage bullish spirits to set the stage for a retest of the 70.30 level and on towards 71 as the next level of upside. However, if we can't capitalise on Friday's reversal and we see prices back down retesting the 68.50, I'd be looking for a move to extend down to the 68 level the ascending trendline support, where we may see some fresh bids emerge. And I'd be looking for bullish reversal patterns in and around this area 
to potentially set long positions again, looking for a retest of that 70 to 30 high. That concludes the weekly market outlook for week commencing January the 13th.